<laughs> so I guess it's basically impossible for him to think outside the box. Hey, what's up my peoples? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Bold Forms Lone Wolf. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. A uh, very simple packaging, not a lot going on here, just Bold Forms, Lone Wolf, a uh, darked, darked, a darkened picture, darked. That's the past tense of dark is dark I don't know what I'm saying it's a picture of the, the the figure and that's pretty much it you just get your warning on either side of the box here and yeah that's that's basically that's it for the packaging so woo that didn't take too long so moving right along here we have Lone Wolf, who is their homage to Motormaster, the leader of the Stunticons. Um, I will say right off the bat, this figure is not great. It's okay. It's not great, but we'll get into that as we go along with the review. But here he is in his truck mode. Um, it rolls fairly well. It's not the smoothest roll, but it, it rolls. Um, you can see it is the iconic look of Motormaster's truck mode. Um, the one glaring thing right here is just that these joints right here are just totally visible. Um, I usually don't complain about gaps, but this is just kind of smacking you in the face like this. This this really needed to have a panel here to cover that up. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely, that, that's a thing. That's, that's a thing. Um, the cab itself, um, it, it, it has some nice details to it, but I feel like the details, like, don't, don't stand out enough. Like, you know, there's not a lot of depth to the, to the molded details on here. So, while it's there, it still seems very, very flat, and it just ends up, like, from afar, it just looks like a flat box that somebody just drew on. So, you know, it just doesn't have that depth to the detail, which, um, really just you know, makes it look authentic. Um, the paintwork is okay. The paint, the paintwork on this figure is a little, eh, it, 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 it's not as crisp as it could be. Um, yeah, you do get some silver paint apps here and there. Yeah, smokestacks right back here, picked out in silver. I mean, you know, I mean, what needs to be picked out in paint is pretty much picked out, but I just wish the details were just a little bit more, I wish they stood out a bit more so it didn't look so flat. I mean, it does have little, you know, side view mirrors here and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, again, you have some more molded stuff, more molded details up top and whatnot. And on the back, you do get some details here that are picked out in silver, which do stand out a bit more. That looks nicer. You've got some red down here and of course this this piece just kind of does kind of flop around this is by design because this is on a, uh, a slider that we'll get into more when we uh, get into the transformation so that's more by design um, not really a flaw but um you know it's it's pretty pretty okay <laughs> now for comparison uh, here it is with a combiner wars Deluxe Stunticon, just so you can see how it scales there. And you can see, obviously, not really in proper scale with these guys. So, there you have that. Here he is with the Voyager Combiner Wars Motormaster. Obviously, way smaller. Here it is with the Fens Projects Diesel. Which, I still think this has the best truck mode. Right here. I love that truck mode. That's that's just especially with the repro labels. That just looks so good, so so good. So you can see, definitely taller, definitely uh, longer. So there you go. There he is with a uh, here he is with a G1 Stunticon. Now he is, you know, definitely. I I think. In better scale with a G1 Stunticon right there. So that's pretty good. That's precious. No, we're not done with the precious because here is G1 Motormaster. Now it's precious. Oh, so precious. So there you go. You can see how he scales with a G1 Motormaster. 
You can see how that works out. There you go. So, yeah, there you have that. He does come with excess. Oh, well, first thing I'll point out here is that the, uh, the back here can open up. There's a little bit of room. You can take these pieces that are included in the package and you can actually, you know, use it to store stuff back here. You, know, you can take these pieces too, you know, so you kind of kind of use that as storage and then everything will fall apart. <laughs> Get that back together. That's another thing too, like things don't completely and totally stay tapped together <clears throat> super well. Neither does my voice, but hey, nobody's perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, you have that little bit of storage there. But um, accessory-wise, he does come with a sword right here, which has some nice silver paint on it and does have some nice molding. So, pretty cool. I can work with that. Um, it does store in the vehicle mode. You're just going to take the, uh, the tip of the blade here and you're going to slide it under this panel right here. So you're going to slide that under there. Then you're going to take this piece. Now, this piece... Apparently it does serve some other purpose. Um, in the instructions, they call this a small pistol handle, even though it doesn't come with a gun. So I don't know what else this is supposed to go for because the instructions tell you nothing else about it. But you also use this to hold the, uh, the sword in place. You just take it and you put it over this bar right here and also over the handle. And that holds all that in place. So there you have your storage for the sword. So there you have that. He also comes with pieces for your Combiner Wars figures, the combination ports. We'll get into that a bit later. He does come with an extra set of hands. We'll get into that later. And then the chest and crotch plate for Menosaur mode. So, that's everything he comes with. Now, um, you know, uh, another critique that people did point out was they didn't like how far the cab sits from the trailer. Um, very easy way to fix that. And, you know, and it involves... Not using the storage for the sword, but if you want to, you can totally use this slider here. Just take this cab and just slide it back, and voila, there it is. Now it's closer to the trailer. So, problem solved right there. Totally up to you. So, I think there's nothing left to do but to get down to transformation, shall we? Let's. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to come back here, and you want to rip off this whole rear section. Yes, parts forming. Worst I have. Um, now this does open up, this totally opens up, there's a lot of nice mold details in here, this opens up for some reason, this may serve some purpose, I don't know, but the instructions tell you nothing about it, I think these people went to the Warbitron School of Instructions and skipped a couple classes on top of that, so, I don't know what to do with this other than take it and just put it to the side, so there you go, once you've done that, you're going to come up front here, and you're going to untab these panels, bring it down, close that up, bring it down, close that up, and this panel right here is a little, little loosey-goosey on me, and then you're going to take this whole front section here, untab it, and you're going to bring the legs down, like that, and at this point you could split this, split the legs, right here, and then you want to bring the hip up and then bring that down so it's oriented properly. Ugh, that joint's pretty tight. Some things on this figure are really tight and some things on this figure are really loose. So it's kind of like... <laughs> tolerances, bold forms, tolerances. But <laughs> oh god, let's not get into that again. But now, you're going to make use of this slider. Now this slider this piece is actually on a track that goes all the way around, and we'll show this off right now. So you're going to take this whole thing, you're going to slide it down. You're going to slide it back, slide it back, and then slide it all the way up to this point right here. So take it, slide it all the way up, and boom. Once you've done that, you're going to take the wheel. You'll see it's the wheel sits in this little notch right here. You're just going to bring it out and then just clip it onto that notch right there and that's where you want that wheel and then you're going to take the cab here and just bring it up at that joint right there to make the foot and take this wheel and fold it in and there you go you got a leg all done second verse same as the first you bring that down bring this back and then bring it up come on bring it up yeah there we go and then 
rotate this up, flip that wheel in, take these wheels, bring them up, and those will snap in right there. Actually went past the point I was supposed to go. There we go. And they got the legs all done. Now, moving to the upper body. Actually, I need to raise the camera here because he does get a bit tall. He actually is quite a big figure. So, there we go. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the waist 180. And here the transformation gets uh, uh, definitely gets a little G1. Um, you're going to take the arms and you're going to, well first you want to untab them from this section right here. And then you're just going to bring the arms out like that. Excuse me, let me just readjust the camera a little bit because sometimes when the tripod is not properly situated you get some of that earthquake action. I just don't want the camera jiggling around too much while I'm trying to do this. There we go. So once we have the arms brought out, these two panels right here will come down and you see these tabs will tab into the slots right there. So just take it, tab it in, tab it in, and there you go. Now you're going to take, uh, we'll work on the arms now. You want to extend the arms. Ah, that's really tight. Open up this panel, flip out the fist, rotate it, close it back up. You're going to take this right here, bring it down, bring that back against the back of the arm. And if you want to, you can extend that shoulder out like that, and you got an arm done. Take it about the same as the fist. Bring that down. Open that up. Flip out the fist. Rotate. Close it back up. Bring that back. Fold that back. There you go. Flip that out. And you're done. Oh, you can also... You want to take these little side pieces here. It's going to be little side script pieces. Take these and fold these down. Fold that down. And these joints are really tight. Come on. Yeah, bring that down. Bring that down. There you go. Make little hip skirts for him. And then you want to take this assembly right here. You just want to untab it. Untab it. You want to bring it down, and this will tab on right there. So tab that on. And then these tabs right here will tab in right there in the center of the back. Tab those on. There you go. Adjust his box head there. And there we go. There we have Lone Wolf in his robot mode. And it's not a bad looking motor master. I mean, it's it, it, it works. I mean it it looks good. Um like I said, the paint work needed to be a little crisper, like we're getting closer on the head sculpt. You can see like the paint on his face, if you can get it to focus here. The paint on his face to me just looks a little chalky, like it just doesn't look as crisp as it should. Um, got a nice yellow on the eyes, I like how they actually like outlined the eyes in, in black, that's a nice touch. But the paint work here, like I said, it, it could have been a little crisper, and you can see right here, it just kind of looks, it looks a little sloppy. Um, but still, you know, you know what's molded in here looks good, and you know, the paint, it, like I said, the, the the paint doesn't look as crisp as it could, but it still kind of gets the point across. Um, but still, you know, it's pretty nice. Um, if you don't like the shoulders all the way out like that, if you want to compress them in, um, you totally can do that. If you prefer that look, of course, you then you know you lose that upward movement. Um, but you just want to make sure that you bring it in just to where that black piece, right to the edge of that black piece, so that way you can still use the rotation here at the shoulder. So, totally up to you again how you want to display it. Now, articulation-wise, his head can rotate. You can do a full 360, and that's all you get out of that. The shoulders can rotate, and again, you do get that outward movement. It's on a ratchet. You do get a bicep swivel. You do get a double-jointed elbow. You do get a wrist swivel. You do get a waist swivel. Legs can go forward. They can go back. They can go in and out. Uh, you do get a thigh swivel. You do get actually a double jointed knee. On a very, it's it's a soft ratchet. It's a soft buttery ratchet. Um, you can get a little bit of wiggle room out of the feet just with the transformation joint, and you do get an ankle tilt. It's more like a toe tilt, but it's it's there. 
so he's still pretty poseable um there have been reports i mean there are people who have gotten lone wolves that just have like floppy loose like ragdoll loose knees mines are okay i mean mines mines are okay sometimes they do tend to to, to droop a little bit but you know you can see mines Mines are okay. Some people have gotten theirs like ragdoll loose, and that's unfortunate. And that's something that definitely needs to be addressed by uh, uh, by bolt forms. This thing's really tight. But like I said, some things on this figure are really tight. Some things are are a bit looser than I would like. So it's definitely a case of, you know, that's something they need to, to take a look at with uh, with future releases. Now, of course, he can hold his sword in his hand, right there. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that he also has the option of uh, swappable hands. So the hands that he has, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. The hands that he has right now are just molded fists. They're just molded into one into one position. These hands actually do have articulated fingers that can open and close. So if you don't like these hands, you can just pop these out. It's just on a simple peg. Pop them out. Pop the uh, Articulated hands in, and voila! There now he has hands with articulated fingers, and he can still. I I found that these hands can't hold the sword as well, and it's. It seems like once you get past a certain point, it gets a little loose. But you know, you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit. But he he can hold the sword with those hands. But I found that you have to fight with it a little more to get him to hold the sword with these hands. So. Again, it's it's uh, a display option if you want to put him in a pose where he has his hands open or something. You do have the option, so that is totally up to you. And he's still fully transformable with the uh, with these hands. Doesn't affect anything. So there you go. So yeah, and again, this thing I have no idea what to do with it. It's just it just sits there. I don't know. So there you have that. Now full comparison. Here he is with Combiner Wars, the Voyager Motormaster. You can get a sense of the size here. You can see he's obviously quite taller than a, uh, a recent Voyager. Uh, here he is with Leader Megatron. And you can see he is pretty much leader size. A little bit shorter, but you no. Know, if, if, if you count the top of his box there, I mean, almost pretty much leader size. So, we have that. Uh, here he is with a Combiner Wars Deluxe, just so you can see how he scales with these dudes. So, there you go. There you got that. Here you have him with Fens Projects Diesel. And as you can see, obviously these figures are going for totally different things. I mean, if you know anything about Fans Project, you know, like, this is this is their style. This is Fans Project's style. Um, this is definitely, we want to update the G1 toy, so. Obviously going for two entirely different things there. And, of course, G1 Motor Master causes pressure. So, so pressure. There you go. So, there you have that. Now, of course, being Motormaster, he can turn into the torso of Menasaur. So we will get right down to that transformation. So to do that, I'm just going to take his hands, rotate them, flip them back in here, close that back up, collapse the arm back in, like that. Take here, just rotate it, put it in, close it up, slide this back up in here. This one always likes to fight me a little bit. There we go. Like that. Then you want to, what do you want to do? You want to undo these panels right here. Bring these up. Like that. You're going to undo this panel right here for now because you need this open so you can do this move. So you're going to bring the arms back in. Pretty much like you're going back into truck mode. Oh, also you want to take these little hip skirts here. You want to flip these back up. Before we do any of that, so flip that back up, flip that back up. So take these arms, bring them back to the forefront here, and make sure that they are squeezed back in right here. Collapse them back in. You'll see there's a little tab right there, that'll tab in right there. Lock that into place. Bring that in, tab that in. Take this, bring this back up the way it was. 
So you're pretty much just taking this rear section and almost putting it back into truck mode. So there you have that. You can bring this back down now because you want to leave that there. You want to rotate the waist 180. So you want it here. You want to take this, uh, this his stomach basically, and you want to turn his stomach. You want to make a stomach turn. So you want to rotate this, bring that around, and there you have a new abdominal section there for Minosaur. Now, for the legs, you're going to take the legs and collapse them up, which can be hard to do. Come on, there we go. Collapse those up. There we go. Like I said, some things are really tight and some things are loose. That's one of the things that's really tight. So you're going to collapse all that up right there. And you're going to now take the feet. You're going to extend this back out. You're going to take this section here and you're going to bring it back down to the bottom of this track. You're not bringing it around. You're just bringing it to the bottom section of this track. Once you've done that, you want to rotate this whole assembly up at this hinge right here. So you want to try to kind of hold all this in place and rotate that up. Oops, not had this slide on you in the process. And bring this up. This part's a little tricky to do. Especially when you're trying to do this with a camera under your chin and at arm's length. <laughs> it's a lot easier when you're just sitting on the couch. Some people don't like to... Uh... Some people think this is easy. Like, no, you try doing this with a camera under your chin at arm's length and shoulder height. You, you tell me how easy it is. You tell me. You, you tell me. But basically, you want to bring it up. Like that. Again. And once you've done that, you're going to take this section right here, which has already come undone here. You want to just bring it down, close that up, and you're going to take this whole section here, and you're going to fold it in like that, and then take this front section here of the truck cab and bring it out like that. And make sure that's all nice and flat, and this will... I didn't like to droop on me before. How dare you droop? That's because I don't have this all the way up. This joint is really hard to kind of... This is another thing that's a little frustrating because this joint is kind of a pain in the butt to, to work with because you're really supposed to be getting all this flat right there, just like that. There we go. I think I got it now. So there you go. So that stays right up against the leg like that. And that's pretty much as clean as it gets. That's, that's, that's what you end up with right there. Not the cleanest thing in the world, but um, it's what you get. So, is that all the way in? Yep, I think so. Okay. I think we got it. I think. I think. Either that or I just broke it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so second verse, same as the first. Bring that out. Bring this up. And it's easier if you don't slide it down first. Uh, okay, I'm dumb. There you go. Bring that up. Right there. And you just want to... Oops. This panel loves to pop off. It's just on a tiny, tiny little ball joint. This one loves to pop off and aggravate me. Um, again, one of the things that's a little looser than it needs to be. But bring that down. Close that up. And then take this whole thing here. Whole assembly here. Bring that in. And then rotate the front of the cab like that. And there you go. You got those legs done right there. So now, we're going to bring in our extra pieces here. We got the chest plate. Let's see a nice Minnesota chest plate. Some purple, silver. Um, the, little, the little car does detach if you want to do that. So, that's coming two pieces. So you're basically going to take these two tabs and plug it into these two slots right here. So just make sure you get it all lined up. If we can, there we go, and then just push that on right there. And you got a new crotch plate. Oops, okay, new crotch plate here. And again, the paints, eh, the paints a little, you can see right in there, like the paints a little, little, little bit on the sloppy side there. A little on the sloppy side. But basically, you want to take these two tabs right here and just plug it into the two slots. Right in there, so just line it up and push it on, and that will stay quite securely. And then you just take the box here and you bring this out, fold this up, 
bring that back, fold that up to reveal the Menosaur head, and there you go, there you have the torso mode for Menosaur. It's not bad, I mean it looks pretty good, again it's, it's definitely kind of an update to the uh, to the G1 toy. Um, take a look at the head sculpt here. It's a pretty nice head sculpt. I do like it. The silver paint looks pretty good. Red eyes. It's even got a little bit of silver, like silver highlights here on the horns, which is pretty cool. I like that. And head is on, it's on a bit of a ball joint just due to everything that's around his head. There's not a whole lot of wiggly waggly room, but it's there. Um, but yeah. There it is. I have no I don't really have any serious mold flash on the sides that will totally, you know, condemn the entire third-party market. But, you know, hey, it's something, it's something. So, there you go. There you have the torso mode. Now, apparently, Bold Forms is going to be making all of the Stunticons to go with this guy. But the cool thing is, is that this guy is Combiner Wars compatible. So, we will bring that in. We'll bring in these pieces right here. Now, these pieces are basically your Combiner Wars ports. Now, these do not work the same way. These don't have the little spring-loaded bit that the Combiner Wars ports have. Um, this is all just friction, and this just you're just kind of like flexing this bit here to uh, to use them. But it's very cool. You get two for the arms. These are the, uh, the, the arm ports. The hair, not the cat hair. That's not part of it. That didn't come in the box. <laughs> so... These are your ports for the arms, and these are your ports for the legs. So, I will bring in my Combiner Wars dudes so we can get all this set up. Alright, so I got my limbs here. Um, now, I will advise that you, you plug these onto the connectors before you actually plug them onto the torso. It just makes life a little easier. So, here is the arm connector here, and you just take it and just slide it right in. There you go. It clicks into place. It's nice and snug. Um, so there you have an arm. Grab the other arm. Get the other arm connector here. Slide that in. It'll snap in. Then we grab our legs here. Bring this down. Slide it in. Right there. I like to slide it in so you're not actually seeing the, uh, the peg there. So that's the way I do it. I'll we'll get off road here. Slide that on. Right there. And there you go. So then it's just a case of taking all these and plugging them on. Oops. See, I knew something was off. I knew something was off on this. I knew it. I knew it. I felt it. I felt it in my bones. There we go. Just make sure that bar is slid all the way back so you have access to the port there. And then you just take them and you just plug them on. Right there, and bring that hip out. So on, boom, right there. And then you take the arms and you just plug them in. Bring it up a click here. Plug that in. That will secure into place. I'll raise the camera in a moment. Push that into place. And there we go. And then the monumental task is actually getting him to stand up. Because, honestly, it's not so much the fault of the figure, it's, it's kind of also the fault of that the stock Combiner Wars feet are not meant to support actual weight. So that doesn't help either. Um, BAM! I got him standing. Yay! It took a jump cut, but I finally... I finally got him to stand. There we go. That is definitely... That's, it's an ordeal to get him to stand. And, you know... Part of it's the figure, part of it is just the stock Combiner Wars feet just are not meant to support actual weight. And, you know, it, it just takes a bit to actually get him to, to get him balanced. But uh, now that we finally got him together, we can raise the camera up. And there we go. So there you have Menasaur here with the Combiner Wars limbs. And uh, it it, it kind of works. The, the 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 arms seem like they're a bit too long for this, so you know. But it's still cool that they made it compatible with the Combiner Wars figures. So uh, you know, 
it is what it is. Um, you still retain all the same articulation, you know, you still got full leg movements, full knee movements, all the good, you know, ratcheting goodness that the Combiner Wars figures provide. So, you know, he's still pretty poseable. Just getting him balanced is the monumental task. So, <laughs> I have to move him now because I need to get comparisons here. Please don't fall over. Please. Stay. Stay. There we go. Comparison here he is with Defensor. As you can see, he's just a little bit taller than a Combiner Wars Combiner here. We will bring in Superion again. Oops, he dropped his gun. How dare you drop your gun? So there he is with Superion. Again, pretty much right there, head to head with Superion. There he is with Leader Megs. So you can see how he scales with the leaders. Um, here he is with uh, Combiner Wars, the Combiner Wars Menasaur torso there, as you can see. I differentiate. Again, this is going for a completely different look, and this is more going for the G1 look. So we have that. Here we have Fens Projects Menasaur. Or M3, you can see. Again, going for two entirely different looks there. And that is clearly, you know, Fen, Fen's project style right there. And this is, again, more going for G1. So, there you have that. And last but not least, here he is with G1 Menasaur. Causes pressure. Mana pressure. There you go. So there you have it. Um, my final verdict on this, um, like I said in the beginning, it's okay, it's not great. There are definitely things on this figure that can be improved. The paintwork needs to be improved because it just seems a little sloppy to me. Um, you know, not as crisp as, as it could be. Um, you know, uh, these guys, I think, went to the Warbitron School of Instructions because the instructions on this thing are horrible. Just so you can, you know, take a look at look at it here. Here are the instructions. Um, like this little piece right here, you know, right here. It is labeled. It's labeled. It's the small gun hilt. It doesn't tell you what to do with it. doesn't tell you what it's for. I'm guessing it's for one of their future figures, but it says nothing about it in the instructions. You know, the, the rear part of the cab doesn't tell you what to do with it, it just tells you to take it off. And the instructions on this guy are just not good. You see, it's just, it's just picture, picture, no arrows, no nothing. Um, this right here is just a jumble of color-coded things. I had no idea what I was looking at for like a good 10 minutes, and then I finally figured it out. But this, I have no idea what was going on there at first, because there are no arrows, no nothing. It's just a jumble of pictures, and they're all color-coded. had no idea what was going on there, and just... The instructions on this guy just are not, not that good. So they definitely need to work on the instructions. Um, Quality-wise, I mean, the plastic feels good. I mean, I, I never had any moments of, oh my god, I need to be careful with this or it might break. I didn't have any of those moments. I mean, it does feel sturdy, but they're just... You know, again, some looseness issues here and there. I mean, some people, like I said, got theirs with floppy, loose legs. Fortunately, mine didn't have that problem, but that is something that definitely needs to be addressed. Um, so, definitely some 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 tolerance issues. Um, you know, it's it's okay. It 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 could have been better. It's okay. Um, you know, and. I, I believe this is this company's first figure, so I, I I will cut them some slack for that because, you know, there are very few third-party companies that come right out of the gate with something phenomenal that is absolutely perfect. I mean, Mastermind Creations, if you remember them, their first figure was legit, like, fragile. Like, things like, if you weren't careful with it, you were going to break it. And... You know, they learned from that. They took that and they applied it to their future figures and every figure got better and better and better and now Mastermind is one of the top companies out there. Um, Keith's Fantasy Club, I mean, their cassettes are legit horrible for the most part. 
but then they put out that transistor, that Masterpiece Blaster, and that thing is phenomenal. And even the cassette that came with it, while I complained about the paintwork, construction-wise, that cassette is superior to anything they've ever put out. So it's good when a third-party company learns from their mistakes and uses it to improve. And I hope that they take the feedback that they get from this figure and apply it to their future releases and that they hope and that they improve release after release because like I said apparently they will be doing the rest of the Stunticon so hopefully their other figures will be marked improvements from what this is this is not it's not horrible I'm not saying this is a horrible toy it's a bad toy but it definitely could have been better that's all I'm saying so Again, this is totally up to you whether or not you want to spend your money on this. I'm not a salesman. It's not my job to sell you this stuff. I just sit here and show it off. Whether you buy it or not, it's totally up to you. It doesn't affect me in any way whatsoever. So if this appeals to you in any way whatsoever, then by all means, pick it up. If not, then, hey, you save some money. So I think that's pretty much it for this guy. So if you would like to pick up this guy or any third party transformer, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so do check it out. And I think that's pretty much it for this guy. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Bold Forms Lone Wolf. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be proud. Palm in your face. Look, all I'm saying is we need a Facts of Life movie. I mean, come on. That would be epic. Well, look who it is. <laughs> well, if it isn't Buckethead and Boxhead, <laughs> you two should start a band. Boxes and Buckets. <laughs> I will take my leave now.